Welcome to the Unknown Options, the place where we explore the unknown options. My name is Will, and today we have on a good friend of mine, Kareem. Tell us a little about yourself, Kareem. Hey, what's going on, Will? Um, my name is Kareem Omer. I'm a, a 26-year-old data analyst. Um, I've been working in my position for about two years now. Um, and yeah, man, I just work, travel, uh, and just try to enjoy life. Awesome. We love to hear that. Boy, I mean, I guess, I guess we're going to start at the beginning. I mean, for someone who might not know, what is a data analyst? Yeah. So, um, I guess the easy way to kind of describe it is someone who, uh, can take data and just make it easy to digest for stakeholders. So when you first look at data, it's really long, really convoluted, just a bunch of numbers, words, um, and you, you got to transfer that into something when you're giving to the stakeholder, something that'll give them hard evidence for, you know, whatever they're looking for, or um, just you're kind of like that midway point. You translate data. Okay. Awesome. Okay. T tell us, um, break down your path from, uh, from high school to college and to now and um, how you got to your current position and were you always looking to be a data analyst? Okay. Well, definitely not. <laughs> I definitely wasn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, graduated from high school. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I went to UNC Charlotte. Uh, I like flunked out after like the first year. Um, I was undecided. Um, uh, and I had to kind of, you know, figure out what I wanted to do and just take things a lot more serious. So, um, luckily I ended up getting reinstated into UNC Charlotte and I had a focus in management information systems where I was introduced to, um, just a bunch of different career options and opportunities, but I, I still didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I, got introduced to data analytics probably my last year uh, of school. And, um, you know, I, I thought once I graduated from college, I was like, yeah, like, I'll definitely get a job. Like, that's what you do. You get a college degree and you get a job. But, yeah, it was tough. For for one, I graduated in the, the middle of the pandemic. So for that's one reason it was tough to find a job. Two, I just wasn't as intelligent in uh, my field as I thought that I was. So I knew I had to do a little bit more learning. So I got introduced to the uh, Google Data Analytics Certificate. And I was just thinking like, okay, I saw that Google would hire people based on this certificate. So I was like, okay, if Google's going to hire somebody, then all these other jobs are probably looking for it as well. So um, yeah, just for those three months, I was unemployed. And I was just kind of diligent working every day on that uh, certification. And once I got out, I just kept applying and applying and applying. And yeah, honestly, it took me for those three months, I was probably applying to like 200 to close to 300 jobs. And yeah, once I finished the, uh, the certificate, that's when I actually landed a job with mm. emphasis as an analyst. So, yeah, that was just, you know, I remember when I got the job, I just looked back at how hard that road was and, you know, how challenging and, but ultimately how rewarding it was, you know, to finally get a job that was nice paying um, and can kind of see, okay, this is what my next five years will look like. Um, after emphasis, uh, I was there for a year just because um, I didn't really like the role I was in, um, honestly, it just wasn't as involved as I wanted to be. Um, and I got a job working for Spectrum as a, a data analyst. So I, I definitely took that and I've been working for Spectrum for almost a year now. Awesome. That's a great story. I mean, yeah, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of parts of that I want to hit into. The first, the first point, I guess, is the flunking out. I mean, what mm -hmm. a lot of people listen to this that may have been in college for a certain amount of time, dropped out, flunked out, whatever. 
what was like I guess the main reason why you think you um you flunked out and, and how would you do it differently if you could go back in time? If you would, I mean some people like some people don't change anything about their lives. Yeah. No, I, I mean I, I feel like I definitely would. Um just take it more serious. I, I I remember that first year I just you know, for one, I didn't know what I wanted to do, so there was no sense of urgency. Um, you know, it was my first year in college. I was kind of just you know, BSing and not really doing what I needed to do. I was just unmotivated. And um, yeah, my grades suffered because of that. Um, you know, I learned it wasn't, <laughs> I learned the hard way. It wasn't like high school where you can kind of get by without studying and, um, you know, doing the work outside of class. Because mm-hmm. when you get to college, it's, it's like, yeah, like you got to <laughs> dig in and, <laughs> and you got to study, you got to put those hours in. So yeah, I learned the hard way. And talking about college, do you think college is a necessity for the position that you're in right now? Honestly, I don't think it's a necessity. I, I, there's a lot of resources now where you can learn straight from home on the computer. Um, like I, I was talking about that Google, the Google Data Analytics certificate. Mm-hmm. You know, that's online. You pay about forty bucks a month, and it's you know. As long as it takes you to finish it, that's how long you keep paying. But there's resources like that. Um, there's a whole uh, course era where there's just a bunch of different um, courses that you can look through. Udemy, um, YouTube is free. And there's a bunch of um, guides and instructors that will lead you through um, a free course where you can learn on your own. And you can just do projects. And, um, yeah, you can get more comfortable with those skills based on the projects that you're doing. And if you're able to showcase that, then I don't see any reason why a job would, wouldn't hire you as opposed to somebody that graduated. Okay. So my, my next question, you kind of answered it, but I mean, so like the barrier of entry for you, you're saying is kind of nice, not low, but there's a lot of different uh, avenues you can go to get into the job. Do you think in the future that get easier or will it get harder? Do you think to get, like will like will more certs be available? Or do you think it's going to kind of dry up? It'll be like you need a degree to get into this job. Nah, I mean, I think if anything, it's been getting easier. Um, you know, because we didn't have access to the internet in the past, like or before twenty years ago. So it has been progressively getting easier and easier. Um, you know, all you need is a, a computer and an internet connection. And as long as those things are being more accessible, then I feel like the education will be more accessible as well. Okay, that's a great answer. Give me the differences on why you think the Google Analytics Professional Certification helped you land a job and why your degree didn't. And I know you were as a pandemic, so like you probably could have had a job, yeah. but what's like the main difference that you think? Well. Once I got my degree, like, like I said, I, I thought I was confident in, in my skills, but uh, once I took the Google certificate, that's when I started seeing like, oh, like I heard about this and it deep dive into those, uh, you know, those skills. And I was just learning more and more. And I realized that from school, I didn't really learn uh, like SQL. It's just like one of the most important skills for a data analyst. Um, Excel, like we had uh, classes for that, but it was just kind of like the basics. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it was a sense of the sense of urgency I had taking that Google certificate, um, that made me kind of lock in, but yeah, I just felt a lot more comfortable when I took that certificate as opposed to, uh, learning in school. Okay. I'm a, I'm a big proponent. I actually wrote an article on my blog, shameless plug about college versus uh, certifications. And I think certifications, I think college is always going to be here. Like it'll be around just because like it's ingrained in people's heads, but I think certifications are going to take a lot of the market share in the future uh, from, from colleges. For sure. Yeah. And I think that like you were saying, um, it's kind of just, College is kind of something that is just like, okay, like it's something that you're supposed to do. Yeah. So people don't take it as seriously because it's like, oh, okay, I have to finish college, then I'll get a job. But certification is something 
that you're actually paying for, for one, mm-hmm. or you're actually put investing your time into outside of whatever you're doing, whether it's working or going to school. But yeah, going to school, you can kind of just go through the motions a little bit more, but a certification, you know, you're actually investing more time and money. 100% well, not money, not money, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that passion. Oh, okay. Yeah. Give us, give us, um, I guess your day to day in your current position, and then tell us about like the evolution from like your that first job that you didn't like to the mm-hmm. uh, job you're at right now in the Spectrum. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll work my way to Spectrum. Um, so yeah, I was working for this company called Emphasis, and it was all remote. So um, yeah, it was just. I don't want to kind of like talk bad on the company, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just. It was hard to reach out to managers. Um, it was hard to kind of understand my role in that company. Um, once I got through like the first three month training process, um, you get placed on like a like a project. But my most of my experience was just kind of getting onboarded on that project, and that's it. <laughs> like I was like really checking my emails talking to, trying to, you know, connect with managers. And, um, you know, I didn't do much hands-on work while I was there. Um, Yeah, and I I really wanted to, you know, get my hands dirty. And I wanted to kind of put the skills that I got from the Google cert, you know, to, to the test. And I didn't really get that until I went to Spectrum. So once I got to Spectrum, um, yeah, and like now my day to day is um, I'll I'll have Teradata up, which is um, what I do all my SQL on, and it's really just I'll have like a week to week like a project or something that I'm working on for my manager. Um, he'll ask me, "Hey, can you can you find me?" these accounts with this type of money who are owned by this. And, and then I'll just dig on my computer and I'll do the work with SQL or I'll use Excel. And sometimes I'll need to kind of show that in a pretty way. And I'll use like Tableau or Power BI to present that to them. Um, But yeah, it's mostly kind of my manager will, uh, you know, talk to me, we'll discuss, or he'll email me a project. And I'll get to work on the project. I'll talk to either the senior analyst or him if I need more information and I'll get to work. So I love having that balance of of group work and, you know, kind of just individual um, locking in. So, yeah, that that's kind of where I'm at right now. OK, and are you are you in person or are you like remote? I'm in person fully person. So what's the oh, man. I'm yeah, praying, I'm praying for you, bro. But, uh, how, <laughs> how, 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 how is the how is like the dynamic? Because you were, you were remote at the first company, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I was all remote. Yeah. How how was the different? Because I've worked, I've I've actually worked in person in the office as an analyst before. Yeah. And I didn't like it, but how was your experience in office compared to remote? Because I mean, we live in like a, a like I feel like it's a remote first culture now. Like, I mean, I know a lot, a lot of yeah, people, yeah. Like, so how was that? How, how are you taking that? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I like um, working in office. Um, you know, I, the the biggest challenges with that to me are just, you know, how the office environment is. Um, you know, it's kind of, you know, that old office building where there's just desks and cubicles. Um, and I don't really like that, uh, but I do like the, um, the communication that you can have with people, um, you know, whether it's working on actual projects and discussing stuff like that, or, you know, it's just actually saying, Hey, good morning and stuff like that. But we've actually been, uh, remote a couple of times. Uh, there was like one time where the office had like a water leak or something and the whole week I was remote. And I felt like I was, you know, just as productive. Um, I felt, you know, a little extra motivated just because, 
you know, you don't have to wake up as early. Um, yeah. you know, I don't have to drive 30 minutes to get to the office. Definitely. Um, you know, I can make my breakfast, eat it, relax, grab, you know, make a coffee. I'm saving a lot of money, saving some time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just feel like, you know, nowadays there there should at least be a hybrid, you know, schedule enforced. Definitely. My company just like instituted a uh, hybrid work. So it's like a lot of people are looking for other jobs. Uh, <laughs> not going to say the name of the company, but. <laughs> yeah, <honest>. yeah. <laughs> no, so, that's how it's going, man. That's how it's going nowadays. But it's, I mean, it's, it's good to hear though. I mean, you're young. It's good to hear somebody young say they, they enjoy office work. Cause like, honestly, you're probably the first person under like 30 that I've ever talked to so they enjoy office work. So, I mean, it's, yeah. but I understand though, you do have like that communication. You, you have to work with someone on Slack to respond to you. Yeah. Like, yeah. To you, so it makes, it makes 100% sense. Yeah. So, well, you know, that, that could just be from my own experience. Um, because you know, my remote experience wasn't as good as I wanted it to, to be. True. Um, and you know, this is really all I know as far as like, you know, working. So, I mean, it's not like I'm really comparing it to anything. I got you, man. Yeah. If you like being, I mean, I guess it depends on your personality, like you were saying, but if you like being alone, which I love being alone and mm-hmm. like you got your own little space, it's like nothing. You don't have a manager, micromanage you like a remote work. Is like, <laughs> I honestly, don't yeah. lie, I forget I have a job some days. Cause like, cause, cause, cause you don't gotta like clock in, you don't gotta like drive. Yeah, in. nah. I forget I have a job. Someone's like, did I even log on today? And I'm like, oh man, oh, don't watch this, man, please. But, um, <laughs> but uh, you might honestly, have to cut that. No. Nah. Uh, yeah, honestly, nah, he cool. My, my manager is cool. Shout out, Josh. Um, what are the um possibilities of growth uh, within your industry? Um, and then what paths can people expect to go like within your position? Yeah, yeah. I think there's a, a, a lot of possibilities for growth in my position for sure. Like, um, you know, I'm right now I'm still considered an entry level uh, data analyst. So, you know, you could work your way up to. Well, first of all, there's so many like everybody, every company needs an analyst. Yeah. And there's so many different types of analysts out there. There's, you know, what I want to kind of eventually get into is uh, a product analyst. Okay. Um, but there's financial analysts. Can you break there's, that down? Is that like product marketing kind of, or what's that? What's, what's a product analyst? Yeah, yeah. So it, it'll be pretty much exactly what I'm doing now, but you're kind of just working for a certain product. Like I'll, I'll, I'll say like a phone, like let's say the new iPhone comes out or whatever. And, you know, you're kind of analyzing and it could be, you know, advertising. It could be, um, you know, financially, it could be, you know, like the hardware, you're kind of breaking it down and kind of seeing the, what's the best way to either save money or, you know, help build the the brand or build the product or, you know, kind of just grow from there. And, you know, I feel like having something like a product that you're kind of attached to and you can see it grow and you can, you know, see that work that you're putting in kind of, you know, you, you'll see a lot more people using the product or, um, yeah, yeah. Whether it be for a big company or a small, like, yeah, like I, I just kind of want that connection. And, you know, I, I'm big into like phones and electronics. So that's something that I kind of want to get into. Okay. Yeah, we definitely know you in the phones. We definitely know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of interrupted you. So like, what, like, what are the other possibilities for growth? I kind of cut you off in the middle of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, if you like working with banks or like in finances, there's financial uh, analysts. Um, there's like billing analysts. Um, you could work. Uh, man. It's, getting lost on me, but I mean, there's just so many different a- avenues, um, audit analysts, quality assurance analysts. Um, yeah, it, it's just, there's so many different ones. I, I can't really pinpoint some of my favorites. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just, I've always kind of looked at the product analysts as like my, you know, if I had a choice. Okay. And it's got, is, is it like fairly easy to move within like to like from like a data analyst 
to like a product analyst or is there other skills you need to kind of acquire to get to that position? Um, no, I think it is um, fairly easy. I mean, once you get the experience, okay. um, about one or two years of experience and, you know, you could possibly move. Um, you know, I know my job requires a year of working there until you can move. Um, and they have like marketing analyst jobs. Um, I, I think they have like, um, forget which one I was looking at the other day, but, um, but it was dealing with like, um, our advertising, uh, advertising, uh, which is spectrum reach. And then I was kind of looking into that, but, um, but yeah, yeah, I know there's, there's just so many different options, even like business analysts, um, yeah, like, and you kind of work, you kind of work within the business a little bit more and you're kind of just like that gap between business and data. Uh, but yeah, there's so many different options. Okay. We have like, we're nearing the end of the interview. So we have like a speed round. It's a, it's a, I call it a speed round, but it's not really a speed round. It's you yeah. can answer them. You can answer like the first, the first one, like, uh, well, yeah, you'll see, but you can, it's not a, I call it a speed round, but it's not a speed round. So it's three, <laughs> it's three, it's three questions. The first question is, are you underpaid or overpaid? You know, I asked this guy, I already know your name. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Look, um, I'm almost getting a bonus. So let's just say right now I'm underpaid until I get that bonus. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second question is, one person, book, or event that changed the trajectory of your life? Oh, wow. Man, that's... I mean... I don't know if this is like a cop out, but I feel like it like it, it got to be my parents. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, but then why? Like why? Well, like just cause, like you know, they always kind of instilled in me to like work hard and um, you know, kind of set yourself up for success. And I just remember like while I was doing the, the data analytics certificate and, you know, I was unemployed at the time and I'm just thinking like, yeah, like I want to make them proud. So that's kind of something that kept me going while I was, while I was going through that. Okay. I mean, that's a really good answer. Can't, can't, uh, got a lot of parents, got a lot of parents forever in our hearts. For sure, man, for sure. And then the uh, the last question is how I mean you kind of we got we kind of went in I mean I I interviewed different people from different roles entrepreneurship so he kind of already answered this but I guess you can you can you can just give your answer whatever you say but how would one get into the role um, you started in if they have a degree or even if they don't have a degree you kind of already answered it but yeah yeah um, well I feel like my position I was just putting myself out there like um, for one. Uh, if you have a degree, I would still go look at certifications because um, that'll only help you out. And even if you like if you have a degree, it'll probably put you above somebody. If you get that certification, it'll put you above somebody who just has their degree. Um, so I think they go they kind of can go in hand in hand. Like, you know, if, if you have the, the certifications, keep working at them and, you know, keep implementing projects into your resume um, because that's going to be the biggest way to showcase to somebody, a recruiter or, you know, a company that you actually know what you're, what you're talking about. Um, And yeah, like my position was entry level. And like I said, I I didn't really have a chance to get my hands dirty. So I was kind of in the back of my head, like, man, like what if I don't know what I'm doing and, you know, what if they find out that I'm not as good as, what they think or whatever. And I feel like you're always going to have that in the back of your head, but mm-hmm. you know, that you just get better with experience and experience. So, you know, don't doubt yourself, you know, cause you, you, you know, you're putting yourself out there. If you get a job, you got it for a reason. Um, but yeah, just, you, you just got to keep trying man, and, and don't give up. Definitely. Yeah. We all, we all definitely get imposter syndrome. So 
Where, it's, it's, yeah. yeah, the inter- I know a lot of the interviews be crazy, but like you said, keep trying, never give up. Mm-hmm. Thank you, uh, Kareem, for joining us today on the Unknown Options. Uh, give give a shout out to all like your soldiers and what you're doing, and everything we can connect with you as. Yeah, yeah. So um, you can connect. I'm on uh, LinkedIn. It's just my name, Kareem Omer. Um, also, I'm on Instagram underscore Kareem K A R R I M. And I also have a YouTube channel um, where I kind of test the limits of what, you know, you can produce with your cell phone as far as like videography. And I do vlogs and, uh, you know, kind of try and travel the world. So, um, yeah, that's going to be my full name, Kareem Omer. Um, Yeah, definitely subscribe, like. (laughs) I got a video on there right now. I appreciate it. Definitely. Everyone, thank you, Will. Thank you for uh, inviting me out here, man. Oh, yeah, of course. We're going to have you back on uh, definitely part two. Once I get more followers, we'll go, and I'm sure you'll be in a different position by then, too. So, well, um, oh, sure, so sure, sure. definitely it'll be a part two. But this is a great interview. I really appreciate you joining us today and giving us all your the, the gritty details of being a data analyst and how to get to data analysts. And mm-hmm. everyone, subscribe and follow Kareem. Subscribe and follow us too, please. <laughs> and y'all, y'all have a nice night. Thank you. All right.